Siamak asks, my biggest frustration with Final Cut is the important process of reviewing and organizing the raw footage. I use Adobe Lightroom to organize over 250,000 images and can find what I need quickly. Can you recommend a solution for an overwhelmed Final Cut editor? Well, first, don't ever, ever load 250,000 images into Final Cut. It's not designed, it's not a still image library like Lightroom. It's a video editor. In general, you want to have less than 10,000 clips in Final Cut in any library. So first, we've got to reduce that number. Organizing media is very personal because it's an extension of your memory and how you find things. Final Cut offers a variety of options from grouping and searching to favorites and keywords. Let me show you some options. Why, look at here. I have a folder called Vacation Pictures. And here I've got video of elephants and monkeys rowing a boat, temples in various states of repair, and tigers. I also have a truly lovely wedding photograph. This couple was getting their wedding photographs taken on the grounds of Angkor Wat. And I especially like that shot. So first I organized my media on my hard disk in a way that can help me find it on the hard disk. This is not required. I can do it inside Final Cut, but I, the more that I spend time organizing before I move it into Final Cut, the better results I get. When I go to Final Cut, open up the Import Dialog, Command-I, and I'm going to navigate to my vacation pictures right here. One of the limitations in Final Cut is that I cannot have events inside events. I can't have a bin inside a bin inside a bin. I can in Premiere. I cannot in Final Cut. Final Cut gives us a very useful compromise. Once I select this, notice that I'm leaving the files in place. I import the selected. And there are all my images. Let's just make this wider so I can see what I've got here. There's my images. But what's more important is that Final Cut has stored them all in a single folder, but keyframed them. So I can say, show me all of my elephants, or all of the monkeys, or the woman rowing a boat in the Mekong River, or temple ruins, or tigers. There's no limit to the number of keyframes that you can apply to a clip. You can even apply keyframes to a range within a clip. So here I say, show me all of the elephants so that I can put a sequence together on what it's like to feed an elephant or wash an elephant or look at an elephant blowing sand on their back to keep themselves cool and flies away. Another thing that we can do is, I like that shot. I want to pick this up right as the camera starts the move, right there. So I'm going to set it in. Find where the camera stops, right about there, and set it out. The elephants were eating bananas that day, and there were a whole bunch lying on the ground, and they did not want them to go to waste. This is such a cool shot. I want to make it a favorite. So I select the range, either the whole clip or the just a portion of the clip. Type the letter F for favorite. Then when I go up here, I can say, show me all of my favorites. It's like building a selects reel. I can list or type F to select all the clips that I want to use to look at more closely to figure out what my total options are. And only that portion of the clip which was flagged shows up here. If I decide that I don't want it, select the clip, type the letter U for unflag, and although the clip is still here, it doesn't have that green bar across the top indicating that it's a favorite. Another thing that I could do, go up to this menu, the key menu, and this opens up the keyword menu. Notice that I've already got a close-up applied, and elephant applied, and vacation pictures applied. Well, let's just say that I want to have a keyword with an animal, and I want a keyword for Thailand, and a keyword for, oh, I don't know, outdoors. I can enter these now by selecting the clips, let's see, I want to take this one, and this one, and this one, and I want to assign it animal, and then this one I want to assign outdoors. I could just type the keyboard shortcut as well. Now, show me all of my outdoors clips. Show me all of my animal clips. Show me all of my elephant clips. 
I could start to use keywords to organize even hundreds or thousands of clips. First, by putting them in folders where the keywords are assigned automatically. Second, by assigning them manually, and I can assign keywords to all selected clips. So if I had a whole bunch and wanted to assign the same keyword to it, I could do that as well. Finally, if we go up to here, I can display my clips based upon how they're organized. I can just group them in categories by the date they were created. This was shot on February 6th and January 30th and January 27th and January 24. Or I could group them by real name. If I select a clip and go over to the Info Inspector and go to General, I can add notes which become searchable, the real ID, a scene, a take, a camera name. This is just metadata fields. Maybe the reel is the photographer name. Maybe the scene is the location. I don't have to use numbers or reels or scenes. This is just a text field which is searchable, which I could add uh, text to at any point. The other thing to keep in mind is as you start to add more and more clips, a really useful tool is a media asset manager, and they're becoming both more ubiquitous and more affordable. Media Asset Manager, if it's optimized or if it's developed for Final Cut, will take the metadata that you assign to the image inside the Media Asset Manager and migrate it over to Final Cut so all of these fields on the right populate without you having to do any manual work at all. So between Media Asset Management software and keywords and multiple events and favorites and sorting and grouping your files, Final Cut makes finding what you want a whole lot easier than you first thought. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 378. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software when you update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.